Hello everyone. Uh, this is Jessica Chang from Busan Bay Hospital, Korea. Uh, I feel very happy to be a moderator of this wonderful session and wonderful meeting. Uh, this is challenging case for a presentation, a challenging case presentation for session, and we have uh, six distinguished cases and three uh, four panelists. Uh, they are uh, Igor B. Bujayev, uh, Gotam Data, uh, Mon Yat, uh, Mon Mayat O, uh, Tung Lin Chui. And I will introduce first three cases and my co-moderator, Dr. Baron C.W. Chang from Hong Kong Adventist Hospital will introduce the last three cases. The first case, uh, case uh, is um, efficacy of King Jidora technique prior to simultaneous stenting for thrombotic occluded left main coronary artery or case report. Dr. Ito, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so from now, uh, I would like to start my presentation. Uh, we have nothing to disclose. This case was a 55-year-old male. He suddenly collapsed and bystander cardiopulmonary resuscitation was performed. The first electrocardiogram showed ventricular fibrillation. After 16 minutes CPR, percutaneous cardiopulmonary support was inserted. Then spontaneous circulation with a systolic blood pressure of 110 mHg and the administration of no adrenaline recovered. He had the coronary risk factors of diabetes, hypertension, and current smoking. The electrocardiogram showed sinus tachycardia with SD segment elevation in AVR and pericardial reads from V1 to V4 reads. Says emergent coronary angiogram for anterior ST segment elevated myocardial infarction complicated with cardiogenic shock was conducted. First angiogram of left coronary artery shows a thrombotic occlusion of left main coronary artery. Otherwise, the right coronary artery was diffuse sclerotic, bended, and tortuous. Imagine percutaneous coronary intervention was conducted using eight French 40 cent long C's from left femoral artery. Guiding catheter was eight French extra backup 3.5 with side hole. Guide wires were passed to LED and LCX. The left angiogram showed the first kissing ballooning technique using 2.5 mm sides, 40 mm lengths in LED, and 2 mm sides, 40 mm lengths in LCX. These figures show the simultaneous ballooning in LED and LCX and KBT using 3 mm balloon in LED and 2.5 mm in LCX. However, as shown in the left angle graph, LED and LCX were abruptly closed. As shown in the middle, KBT to LCX bifurcation also paid to increase the timigrade flow. Thus, we applied the King Vidro technique to LMT disturbed torification. The size, uh, sizes of balloons in LED, OM, and LCX were 3, 2.5, and 2 mm respectively. After KG3 spot hedge thrombotic regions at both of the proximal sites of LED and LCX were observed. Everolimus eluting stents were simultaneously placed by crossing over the both of the LED and LCX ostiums. Finally, grade flow of three was obtained in both of LED and LCX. King Ghidorah techniques was connected with the three next monster, King Ghidorah. 
fighting against Godzilla. Kissing balloon technique using long balloons could not restore the flow of LED, LCX, and OM. KGT using three long balloons made Timmy 2 flow in both of LED and LCX. And enable to place short length stents in LMC bifurcation. Simultaneous with stenting made Team 3 flows in both of LED and LCX. We concluded, we concluded the King the King Gear technique using wrong balloons for thrombotic occluded left main coronary artery in a patient with cardiogenic shock was effective to simultaneously restore the flows of LED and LCX and to the subsequent stenting. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, this case is now open to discussion. Uh, is there any questions or comments from the panelists? Very interesting presentation. I've never used triple balloon kissing technique. And could you suggest what French guide do you use and what balloons do you use? I worry about the deli deliverability of that. Uh, so as we showed that uh, LMT, large LMT is thrombotic occlusion. So we firstly use the eight French size of uh, we inserted the five French uh, sheets and we use the five French uh, guiding catheter. And the balloon is, uh, so we use the three card wires and uh, we use the uh, three millimeter size and 2.5 size and two millimeter size. So we simultaneously inflate it in the uh, left main uh, bifurcation, distal bifurcation. We experience uh, several times to use this technique and we know that uh, we use the eight French catheter. Thank you. Yeah, it says, may, may I ask the outcome of this patient? Uh, yes, uh, we successfully uh, recanalized, but uh, the uh, uh, hemodynamic was so severe and he died in the day uh, three, day three. I see. Mm. His conscious level is so, uh, his conscious is not restored due to the ischemic brain attack, ischemic brain damage. I see. Thank you. Okay, any, any other comments? Yeah, can I ask you a question? Is there any circulatory support that you are using during the PCI? Uh, Is there any IEBP or something like that? Yeah, we partly inserted the PCPS and oh. we, we inserted guiding catheter from uh, left side femoral artery. So after we finished the PCI, we inserted IEBP. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not and that, yeah. Uh, radial RT. Oh, yeah. And may I ask, how do you place the 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 proximal end of the balloon that you are placing in the OM branch? Is it is it from the proximal end of the OM to the distal left main, or where do you place the uh, balloon position? So we use the long balloon and the. We intended yeah. to simultaneously suppress the uh, from distal RMT to the proximal yeah. of the OM. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, okay. Let's move to the next case. Uh, the next case will be presented by uh, Meng Ying Lu from Taiwan. And the case is uh, the Crusade microcatheter facilitated technique in complex and long chronic uh, total occlusion case. Uh, Dr. Lu, please. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mong Yinu from Taiwan, Taitong McKay Memorial Hospital. And my present topic is Crusade microcatheter facilitated technique in complex and long TTO case. I disclosure no conflict of interest. It's a 68-year-old man with hypertension and heart failure who complained of progressive exertion angina and the sound scan shows severe ischemia in LAD territory. And the uh, angel shows the LAD CTO and uh, there is no visible LAD stump. 
and uh, uh, the other angel shows the collectors from RCMPDA to LAD desktop and the PLV to LAD uh, set top branch. And then let's make an angel summary. It's a LED CTO without visible LED stock and a very, very long CTO region. And also good collaterals from RCA PDA to LED desktop. So it's a JCTO score three and we try retrograde approach first. And first uh, we, uh, we use extension caster and microcaster to deliver the guy wire to LED desktop. Hardware cannot pass the digital cap too hard, but uh, the wire is not long enough, but our guiding catheters cannot change to shorter guiding catheter because uh, there is no available size. And also the patient complain chest tightness. So we stop the procedure. And we after we check the patient condition, we try any good approach and we use Crusade Mail Caster to assess the wire puncture. At first, we deliver the first guy wire to CERC. And then we use wiring, to, wiring with Crusade microcaster uh, to find the LED uh, entry. However, we fail. However, we noted there is a Ramus, and uh, the Ramus can provide a better condition to, to find the entry because when the guy wire from the end hole of the Crusade microcaster uh, enter the Ramus and uh, uh, rather than the circ, it can provide more acute angle and uh, give the wire more support and uh, more easily to enter the LED entry. So after we enter the LED entry, we deliver uh, the wire to the LED plasma smoothly. And then we pass the LED middle and finally we almost enter the LED distal, but we cannot enter the true room. We spend much time. But so we pull back the guy wire and shift to change to soft one. And uh, then we pass the guy wire to the septal branch and then wire into the RCA through the collateral. And then we do uh, we perform the pull by the LED proximal. And the, church, uh, the angel shows the TME2 flow to the LD septal branch. And then we do, or we advance the crusade to septal branch and uh, uh, use the side hole to deliver the conquest to puncture the LD middle CTO region. But uh, the CTO region is too long, so we, we have to uh, pass the guy to a distal other septal branch and do again, perform the pull bar and LD middle. And then we uh, develop a uh, crusade to the septal branch and uh, uh, use the conquest to puncture the LD distal CTO region. And but the, the, this clip is too hard, so we use knuckle wire uh, crossing to LD distal and uh, enter the false lumen. We use parallel technique to enter the, the wire to the true lumen. And uh, we use small balloon to pull by the LED distal side and to check IBUS. The IBUS um, shows the LED distal puncture side is in true lumen. And uh, the whole steel region is almost in true lumen, except for the LED middle uh, puncture side is in false lumen. And then we uh, deploy three uh, DS and LED and the final angel uh, is acceptable. We use the Kanika Crusade Metal Cassiter and the distal, the length of the distal and side hole, distal end hole to the side hole is about 65 millimeters. We have three discussion points. For the first one, uh, for, a, for the LED CTO without stump, we use CTO guide wire with Crusade to find entry. We choose Ramus rather than Serp is because more acute angle has more support and more easily to enter the LAD entry. And for the LAD CTO legion, we use Crusade microcaster to overcome the long legion step by step. And uh, it's possible to for the guy to enter the fourth movement. But uh, just like car technique, 
we could uh, overcome the hard cap and uh, re-entry the true woman. Uh, for conclusion, the Crusade microcaster play an important role of uh, facilitating guy Y finding CTO entry at the bifurcation region and facilitating guy Y entering long CTO region step by step. And the guy Y can support and the penetrate force and uh, will become greater in acute angle for CTO region. And uh, we perform POBA before deliver Crusade microcaster is because it could make more space to deliver Crusade microcaster easier. That's my case presentation and thanks for listening. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for your nice case and nice presentation. Uh, very successful result. Um, uh, so this case is now open to discussion and is there any question or comments from the panelists? Hi, uh, this is hi. This is Foreign from Hong Kong. So, uh, um, may I ask, uh, Doctor Doctor Lu? Lu, yes. So, uh, what, what, uh, why don't you do, and uh, uh, maybe I missed the the, the the point. Have you done any high first imaging before you you try to puncture the the pos the pos possible cap of LED? Uh, you mean the image? Uh, yeah, yeah. Bound? Do you consider do some imaging before you you use the crusader crusader and 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 the guy wire to puncture the, the proximal oh, LED? Uh, no uh, specific uh, picture about the uh, the puncture, but I just uh, present the concept. Oh, oh, oh okay. Ha but have you done the IFAS before you you you? IFAS. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. No, no. I, I just uh, uh, from the collateral angiography. To to check the the direction, but we didn't use the IBUS to check the the, the puncture. Yes. I see. I see. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from panelists? I think if uh, for uh, pre procedure planning, uh, either you do a CT and you first to look for the your stump and the uh, likely trajectory or. Are uh, IVAS possibly the better idea to start with? Before you start, I do a CT angio for your planning, and then you uh, help up IVAS because the penetrator stump. So you you mean uh, uh, I didn't do any other uh, CT mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. uh, before the, the the PCI. So I just uh, yeah uh, from the, uh, just guess the uh, direction from the collateral angel. Uh, of yeah, course, it's because it's yeah, very long. Stump and the likely trajectory of the LED. Because you don't have any LED stump, you don't know where it is. So oh. if, you, if you fail retrogradely, then you have only one option left. You have to go anterogradely. So if you do CT and you before procedure, you have an idea about the LED stump and the likely trajectory of the LED. And you didn't take the uh, help of IVAS. That could have helped you in a better way to penetrate the LED and uh, to cross the wear. Okay, okay. Uh, good, good point. Yeah, uh, because the, so when we do the puncture, we cannot uh, hold two force, we just uh, let the wire to, to find a, a good uh, entry point, but uh, we didn't do a very uh, force, uh, forcefully to, to puncture the, the, the side of puncture. Uh, uh, yes, of course, we didn't use IVA to check the entry point, but uh, just uh, by the, the the sense when you using the wire, yes. Okay, okay. Because of the time time limitation, I uh, I want to proceed to uh, next case. Is it okay? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. next case uh, next case will be presented by Dr. Sakorwat uh, Montri Bait from Thailand. Uh, uh, he will present the uh, risk PCI of the bifurcation region with the an aneurysm in the center uh, after acute CABG failure. Uh, Dr. Montri Bate, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Sakonwar Montri Bate from the Police General Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present the case here at the Complex PCI 2021. My case is entitled Rescue PCI of the Bifurcation Lesion with an aneurysm in the center after acute cabbage failure. I have nothing to disclose. 
My case is a 62 year old man who presented with acute chest tightness for 30 minutes. He had hyperacuity wave in V2 to V4. So the diagnosis at that time was atrial STEMI and he was brought to the cat lab for emergency angiography. Here's the RCA. There's a distal RCA lesion here. And on the left, as you can see, there's a very tight proximal LED that extends into an aneurysm. A reverse takeoff DG, very big DG here, a mid LED lesion downstream, and also the ecstatic and stenosis circumflex. So the patient was uh, had not an STEMI, so we do pull by first with 2.5 balloon. And then due to the complexity of the lesion, I conclude the procedure and send the patient for cabbage instead. The patient was successfully grafted with Lima to LBD, SVG to DG, and SVG to digital ICA, but CERC and OM is too small. However, on day one post-operative, the patient had heart failure and cardiogenic shock that required inotropes. So we bring the patient back, back to the cat lab for uh, angiography with the suspect of acute graft failure. As you can see here, both the native RCA and the SVG to RCA grafts are all patent. But on the left, there's virtually no collateral flow from the grafts, so we suspect graft failure. And also right now, the DG1 is now totally occluded. And here is the graft. So both Lima to LBD and SVG to DG are now totally occluded. How should we treat this lesion? So we got tight proximal LD lesion that extend into an aneurysm, a reverse takeoff DG that is now totally occluded, and a tight proximal, a tight mid LED lesion downstream. So my plan is to prioritize LED over DG and treat mid LED and proximal LED first, and then last, lastly, we will treat the DG. So simple strategy is the best to shorten the procedural time and also to avoid malapposition. I plan to stand with a gap in the center and flare the stent to make the stent opposed to the wall without any malapposition into the uh, at the aneurysm, like this. An IABP will be used for support. So first, we insert the IABP and then do pull bar with 2.5 balloon at mid LED and proximal LED, and then place a stent at mid LED first. This is a 2.5 stent with a minimal protrusion into the aneurysm. And then we uh, move the balloon nap a little bit to flare the stent for a uh, complete uh, apposition. After that, uh, we do further polydilate proximal LED up to 3.5. And then again, place a stent at proximal LED with minimal protrusion into the aneurysm and then flare the stent to make uh, the stent edge opposed to the wall of the aneurysm. After that, with a gap at the aneurysm and DG opening, uh, I can wire uh, into the DG with some difficulty. I need to use microcatheter for fine control and then pre dilate further with a 2.0 balloon at DG. And then lastly, plus a stent, here is a two by 25 stent at the DG with minimal protrusion into the aneurysm and then also flare the stent to make it opposed to the wall of the aneurysm. This is the final angiogram. As you can see, both LED and DG are now patent and the flow is good. The patient uh, can be brought out of the cat lab and recover within a week and can be discharged home. So this is my take home message. So acute graft failure is a cause of post cabbage deterioration can be presented as ST deviation, heart failure, and cardiogenic shock. PCI of the bifurcation lesion with an aneurysm in the center is very challenging. So uh, the usual strategy is to send the patient for cabbage. However, simple strategy of sending these lesions with minimal protrusion into the aneurysm and flailing is feasible and safe, especially in the patient with cardiogenic shock. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. A very nice result, I think. Uh, so this is case is now open to discussion. Uh, is there any question or comment from the panelists? We'll start first. Okay, Dr. Bujaev. 
Thank you very much for the great case. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, is uh, this aneurysm is look like some occluded artery? Is it possible that it is mammary graft closed, and th there is a stump of, of the of the bypass? And can you say it again? Yeah. Oh, so the the round shape contrast. You speak that it is aneurysm. Sometimes look when we see this picture when there is occluded artery, like diagonal branch, for example, occluded. Uh, is it possible that it is not aneurysm, but it is the graft, the mammary artery graft for the coronary artery bypass? Well, uh, from the first angiography uh, before cabbage, I think. It's clear that it is an, an aneurysm. And also the reverse takeoff DG make it hard to do PCI of this bifurcation lesion. So uh, at that time, I, I, I do the procedure like this. Uh, doctor, have you done the IHS or any other imaging of, uh, in your patient before and after the procedure? Well, because the patient was in cardiogenic shock. So I try to shorten the procedural time as, as, as short as possible. But uh, for the placement of the stent, I think uh, the stent did not uh, uh, malapose in this big aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think, uh, uh, what do you think about the simply deploy long set from proximal to mid LAD covering the aneurysm set? Uh, without uh, diagonal branch stenting. Uh, I think diagonal, diagonal branch seemed acceptable uh, from the beginning. And I think that could be an uh, option, yeah. Well, I think if we put a stand that crossover from proximal to mid LAD, mm -hmm. uh, this big aneurysm, I don't know how to make the balloon to, to make the stand opposed to the walls. And if we do KBI, uh, the reverse takeoff of the DG will make it difficult to, to pass the balloon there. And I'm not sure uh, mm -hmm. at the proximal of the, uh, of the balloon, how, with, how will it uh, interact? Will it be elliptical or will it be circular? We are not sure. Mm. Okay, understand. I, it's, a, it's a really, really great case because it's a very difficult situation as well because you, have, you are dealing with the aneurysmal segment in the mid LED at the bifurcation and then also the size di discrepancy between the distal and then proximal end of the LED as well. And I would, I would think that, you know, IVAS will be a great help in those kind of procedure like that, yeah, to guide us how big is the aneurysm. And can I ask uh, how long, uh, I mean, uh, how, how long the dual antiplatelet therapy are you giving to that patient? Is there any role of anticoagulant for that as well, for the aneurysm? Okay. Okay. Uh, in this case, we give them, uh, we give this patient uh, aspirin and ticagrelor, but I agree with you that anticoagulation may be beneficial in this case, but if, if I place the stand without any mild opposition, uh, I think, um, if we put him on anticoagulation with triple therapy, it will uh, increase the bleeding risk without any uh, necessary uh, evidence support. Dr. Chen will uh, introduce the next three cases. Dr. Chen, please. Yes, uh, the, the next uh, presentation is a complete percutaneous coronary revascularization of calcified left main and triple vessel disease by Dr. Lajendra Bopathy Sengutuvan from a Siri, from Siri Ramad Chandra Institute of Higher Education and Research from India. Good morning, everyone. I will be presenting this uh, complex uh, percutaneous coronary revascularization, which is complete in a patient with uh, moderately calcified left main and triple vessel disease. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Complex PCA team. Uh, I don't have any disclosure regarding this particular presentation. <clears throat> he, he's a 65-year-old gentleman, admitted to the history of uh, acute rotor chest pain, he was diagnosed to have anterior wall micro infarction, for which he was uh, thrombolized with the tenactive pace in a peripheral hospital and he was uh, transferred to the hospital. He had one episode of ventricular tachycardia, which was treated medically in the peripheral hospital. He, we did an angiography in this particular patient, which we will be discussing later. He was hemodynamically stable in a clinical class 2 
position at that point of time. This LB function was uh, moderate with an EF of something around the 40 to 45 percent at that point of time, which uh, RWMA in the LB directly. His hemoglobin was okay, platelets was okay, creatinine was okay. Uh, he underwent and this is the ECG of a particular patient which revealed evidence of antiviral MI at the point of time following which he was lysed in the peripheral hospital. This is the angiography of the particular patient. You can appreciate a uh, triple vessel disease with a uh, distal left main lesion too, which is uh, 50 percent. Uh, RCA revealed a 90 percent lesion, LAD revealed uh, another 90 percent lesion, long term and moderately calcified uh, lesion in the circumflex also. Uh, proximal circumflex has got another 80 to 90 percent lesion. Patient was offered cabbage, however, patient was not willing for the same uh, in, in spite of uh, providing uh, sincere uh, attempts to uh, get cabbage done in this particular patient. Since he was not willing for cabbage, uh, we thought of providing an alternative evaluation, which was a percutaneous uh, through percutaneous approach. Uh, RCA went very well. Uh, his LV EDP before the intervention was measured, which was around 32. Hence, an IABP was inserted uh, through the left groin before proceeding the intervention. The procedure was done through right femoral artery. Uh, the right femoral artery was a, a straightforward procedure. Uh, we had difficulty in getting support. However, we were able to uh, manage it. Uh, after the dilating the lesion, we stented it with a uh, 3.30 into 3.5 into 20 DES. Uh, post dilatation was done with the soy extra thorium with the type of 3.58 millimeter NC balloon. This is the final angiography of the particular patient. Following this uh, procedure, we went ahead and uh, intervening the uh, left main and double vessel disease. Uh, people may think why the non culprit uh, RCA was intervened. Uh, this guy, pressure patient, had a CD elevated LV EDP. RCA was uh, a straightforward lesion. We thought intervening RCA is going to be simple. And by providing circulation at least in 25% LV, when we are going to balloon up the left may may help this particular patient. Uh, cost is an issue for mechanical circulatory support, uh, especially in Pala in our country. So it was discussed with the patient, however, because of the financial constraints, it was not uh, done in this particular individual. Uh, we were able to cross the lesion with the run-through and BMWI respectively in LAD and second pipes. Uh, well, I was, was attempted to negotiate through LAD, however, we could not get it done, hence we started directing the lesions uh, successfully uh, with a small balloon, 2 -0 balloon, later on with 3 -0 balloon, and after that we utilized a uh, Wolverine balloon to prepare the bed both in LAD and circumflex. Following which an I was, was done from both LAD and circumflex which revealed a uh, uh, kind of a uh, moderately calcified vessel in the proximal LED. The calcium which we will be appreciating was in the distal LED. We, our intention was not to go into the particular calcium. We would like to, uh, it's a diffusion diseased vessel. There is no good landing zone. Even identifying a landing zone was a problem in this particular patient. We utilized uh, uh, ultimate trial criteria to identify a plug zone, which is uh, less than 50% with a reasonably, uh, with a re without any significant calcium in the particular niche. We identify a spot there was no significant calcium in the proxy lady or the left main. The arc of calcium was less than 180 percent. Hence, we thought, okay, we have prepared a good uh, bed and we will proceed with intervention for LAD after it was into uh, circumflex, which also revealed the same, almost the same finding. The fiber calcium block, however, the bed has been prepared decently by a regular balloon and a, uh, and a cutting balloon uh, preparation. We utilized a step crush technique, it is a seven frame system. We did a step crush, a step crush technique. Uh, after propositioning the LED balloon and inflating it, we just uh, a gentle pullback, stent pullback technique so that we ensured that we are across the circumflex ostium. After that, we deployed the uh, circumflex stent. The circumflex stent was uh, inflated, a 3020 uh, and regulating stent was inflated. Following which, the left main to LED stent was inflated. The, the one thing which happened in this particular patient was though we tend to, uh, we intended to cover the left main uh, from the ostium during the process of inflation, you can appreciate that uh, the stent has slipped down, uh, especially with the diaphragm. You can see, if you look, watch closely, you can see the more stent getting displaced with the respiratory moment. We know that we have missed the ostium in this particular patient and we would like to cover it with a second stent from inside the left main itself. Uh, following this, uh, patient was stable. There was no issue that was encountered clinically or hemodynamically by us. We recrossed the circumflex with a uh, 
field of FC wire, and then 1.5 balloon was utilized to open the studs following which um, a circumflex tank was forced to electrolyze the 3 over MC balloon. Later, we utilized another 3 over balloon in the LED, and the 3 over balloon was uh, utilized to post the entire LED segment, and the kissing balloon was done at a nominal pressure of 12 uh, with a short uh, uh, kiss at the left main, short segment of only short segment of kiss at the left main. Then another stent was utilized to stand the left main to left main. The 408 millimeter D was utilized. Uh, after that, uh, it was again the same balloon was utilized to flare the uh, off steam of the uh, left main also. So this is the final IVAS. Uh, because of time constraints, I have uh, limited the final IVAS pictures. The minimal lumen area, which was uh, which means the distal reference minimal area was 5.3 in the initial IVAS. We got an area which is around 5.25 in the distal segment. The minimal strength area in the proximal segment was 8.1, and the minimal strength area in the left main was 10.1. Uh, after post electing the lesion with the 4 over NC group. We thought we, we are done with the procedure. And this is the pre and post procedure in LA recorded in pre and the RA recorded post and our pre RC and post RC. Uh, the discussion points I would like to provide in this particular patient and uh, what are the various interventions that could be used in bifurcation lesions? Uh, what are the current recommendations of utilizing imaging in PCA and how to uh, assess uh, the perfect position of stent while deploying the osteolipin uh, stent? There are many people may use different angles, coral or cranial, leo cranial or a slider or a cranial, shallow leo cranial. I would appreciate if the uh, chairperson and the panelists will discuss about these points in addition to discussing about uh, uh, what kind of revascularization, what is the initial vessel they would have attempted to revascularize in such situation. Going with RCA was my strategy. Uh, maybe the panels may have a uh, different opinion. With this, I would like to thank the organizers for providing this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, one and all. So, complete revascularization can be done in stable AC patients. Never miss the left main osteum and left main shunning. Ensure multiple angles. Uh, cutting balloon should be used for fibrotic lesions, even for a lesion which is calcified, uh, at least moderately. Uh, that patient, we forgot to tell that. Uh, take a deep breath and hold your breath. And that, that is the reason for the stem getting uh, sucked inside the left main, uh, inside the LAD during the deployment. Uh, there's no uh, no no kind of uh, no reason not to use imaging, especially I was uh, for left main PCI. Uh, plant tuition technique is uh, definitely useful if it is going to be a complex uh, definition strategy, uh, specified complex left main lesions. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, so the the, the next uh, presentation is uh, the title is a challenge for PCI and me? true. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So the okay. next presentation is challenge for PCI and true left main bifurcation with multiple stenosis in left circumflex, and by Dr. Novita Sitoris. Hello everyone, greeting from Indonesia. I'm Novita and I'm an interventional cardiologist fellow. It's such an honor and great opportunity for me today to share one of the cases we had in Dr. Karya di Hospital Semarang, Indonesia. And this is a case of challenge for BCI at true left main bifurcation with multiple stenosis in LCX. I have nothing to disclose. As an introduction, the incidence of left main stenosis identified with CA is between 5 to 7%. Approximately 1% osteal, about two thirds in the distal, and remainder are in the shaft. Distal left main coronary artery bive disease increases PCI procedural complexity and is associated with worse outcome than isolated osteal or, or shaft disease. In the past decade, randomized control trial and meta analysis have indicated simple is better for treating coronary bive lesions, mostly due to a high incidence of MI and instant thrombosis following complex strategies. Indeed, a simple strategy not only reduce procedural related complication, but also decrease device related clinical events during long-term follow-up. But despite all of the benefits of simple is better, this strategy has this advantage. Osteum stenosis or even occlusion of the side branch due to plug shift after stent implantation in the main branch. Well, what's next?
And this was our case. A 61-year-old diabetic hypertensive ex-smoker male came to our hospital with clinical manifestation of stable angina pectoris CCS223. He has a history of VCI with one death in LID in 2019. At presentation, physical examination was normal. ACG was normal sinus rhythm. Echo shows no regional wall motion abnormality and normal AV function. CAG shows significant stenosis at distal left main osteal LAD and osteal LCX. And the distal in, uh, in distal LCX and all of its branches, um, giving us the medic venina classification by progression 111. Here is the angiography of the RCA. As we can appreciate here, there's a 70% stenosis at the proximal RCA. And for the LCA, angiography shows 70% stenosis at distal left main, 80% stenosis at osteal LAD and LCX, and multiple stenosis at distal LCX at, and at the osteal proximal of all the branches. So he were, he were, we were facing here a complex lesion at the distal left main bifurcation with Medina classification, and hence we will treat such lesion as through bifurcation lesion. As we all have known, when treating bifurcation lesion, we always have two options to overcome this, whether it is a professional stand or upfront to start stand strategy. And some studies did show the benefit of two stand strategy, especially in true bifurcation. As shown in LCA angiography in the previous slide, LCX has many OMs with stenosis at the ostia. And we were really concerned about oh, losing the OMs if we choose upfront to stand strategy. But on the other hand, professional stand strategy has higher risk of restenosis of osteal LCX with POBA, especially because this patient has diabetes mellitus. So we decided to go with professional strategy combined with DCB. And because the distal of LCX also had a significant lesion, we think to treat that, that, that lesion as well. So we decided to work on the distal LCX then stenting the LM and LAD. Lesion preparation in LCX started using right femoral artery axis, extra back up CLS 3.57 frame guiding catheter, hypercode guiding wires, and predilate distal to osteal LCX with 2.010 mm scoring balloon, up to 16 ATM, and optimize it with higher balloon size 2.510 millimeter scoring balloon up to 16 ATM. When predilate osteal SCX, we put wire on LED and when and which then return uh, remove to OM3 before stenting the distal LCX. After the lesion preparation in LCX, wire we did wiring to OM3 um, and afterward 2.538 millimeter dash was then inflated on the distal LCX. A 2.5 uh, 30 millimeter drug coating balloon was then dilated slowly, increase up the pressure up to 17 ATM for 45 second admit um, a proximal LCX uh, through a bit uh, to L left main. On observation and evaluation angiography, no dissection nor significant recoil was seen on the angiogram. The result is as seen at the very right video panel. We proceeded to perform PCI for the LMLAD. Predilatation LMLAD was done with 2.5 10 millimeter scoring balloon at 18 ATM. A 3.028 millimeter dash was then successfully deployed at proximal LAD LM, followed by pot at LMLAD using non compliant balloon 4.012 millimeter at 18 ATM. Guide wire at LED was recrossed through distal stand strut at osteal LCX, followed by osteal LCX strut opening with 2.010 mm semi compliant balloon. Then, with a NC 2.75 12 mm balloon, uh, we, uh, and finalized with kissing balloon technique using non compliant balloon at uh, 4.012 at LM LAD up to 10 ATM. As a final, final touch, we did final pot at LM LAD with non compliant balloon on LMLAD uh, with 4.012 mm uh, non-compliant balloon to up to 22 ATM. The result is the right panel. We've seen uh, no residual stenosis at LMLAD, but I think there's a 20% at osteal LCX was observed. This is the final result. 
One of the benefits associated with the use of the DCB in the management of biflation include homogeneous administration of the drug due to the coroner due to drug to the coronary well, which may negate some of the restonesis in comparison with FOBA. There may also be less disruption of the coronal anatomy compared with stenting. Uh, I took this from a article, review article on treatment of biflation with drug coded balloon. Uh, the, the studies investigated the benefit of DCB in biflation. As we can see, most of them show benefit on DCB. Only one trial showed negative result though, that is the Babylon trial. Of all these studies, Biolix one, they've cited, and I would like to add some more beyond trial, represent the group of patients similar to this very case, which assessing the feasibility of professional tenting with the combination of death in the main branch and drug coated balloon in the side branch. As a take home message, one stand strategy combined with drug coated balloon for side branch seems to be a rational strategy in true left main biflation where there is concern of losing LJX sites branches. The drug-coded balloon used for bifurcation lesion management remains very attractive indeed as a complement of a professional stenting strategy. Thank you for your attention. Okay, the, the presentation is open for discussion. So any comment from the panelists? Dr. I'm not really sure about your uh, drug eluting balloon approach in the CERC. Possibly a DK cross strategy would have been a better option. And of course, so with some sort of imaging, either IFS or OCP. And uh, it's a possibility you may lose your OM branch, but the angulation of OM is around 70 degrees. And possibly it could have easily crossed the OM and you can restore it. Uh, uh, possibly the decay class strategy would have been a better option in your patient and some sort of uh, imaging helpful. But uh, regarding your drug in balloon, I'm not sure your Fipcard 5 and debut trial, they have used only from the, your LED diagonal or uh, SARC OM branches. I'm not sure about the left main uh, drug lifting balloon data. Okay, for uh, thank you for the comments, Dr. Data. Um, uh, I'd like to answer on that comment first about uh, maybe imaging. Uh, sure, in treating um, through left main bifurcation, uh, an imaging would be very, very useful, but at the time we don't have any. There is, there is not available here. That, that that time, and for the KCRAS, yeah, um, I I I knew of uh, what I know is, is there are some studies uh, regarding KCRAS uh, uh, with a better outcome in true life main bifurcation, but uh, it is also a also a concern of the operator experience. So um, first we 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 concern about the OMs, uh, the LCX, LAD angle might not be not so narrow but but uh, putting wire after stenting the lcx and if something happened to the oms we have to deal with the stenting uh, left main lcx i think it's a quite it will be quite challenging so uh, we put the uh, drug coated balloon instead can i ask you a question sorry maybe i sure. missed that uh, at what stage do you use the dread eluting balloon? Is it at the kissing stage or no? At the, um, at the start, at the beginning, yeah. At the beginning, before the kissing, and even before the, the I mean, before the stenting of LMLID, after stenting the distal part of the LCX, because um, I think a drug coated balloon is quite a bit stiffer than the usual plain balloon. And it is quite long. I think it's like 30 millimeters. So if uh, we we use the dark coated balloon for kissing, I might, I'm uh, I'm afraid of this expectations with will reduce if we put the depth after the kissing or after yeah. the stand. Yeah. So after you put a stand oh, in the distal you. second flex, uh, so did you do any poba before putting a drag eluting balloon to the proximus? Uh, yes. Yes, with scoring balloon to uh, to oh, yeah. 10 millimeters and um, optimize it with uh, the higher balloon to 0.5 yeah, scoring because balloon. Of the, because of time limitation, we have to move to the next presentation. Okay, so the next presentation is successful retrieval of this notched non inflated coronary stand where Michael Slayer and Stan Book by uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar from Mitchell Hospital from India. Thank you, uh, respected chairman, and uh, hello to all. And uh, here I'm presenting a nightmare in the cath lab uh, with the successful uh, bailout. 
So my case is successful retrieval of the dislodged non-inflated coronary stent where microsnare and stent group. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. Just wait. So I have nothing, nothing to disclose. There is no. Uh, so this is the case history. This is 65 year old uh, gentleman with diabetic and hypertensive. Uh, had history of uh, anterior wall MI in 2004. Bed ejection fraction was 35 percent, and was on medical therapy. But recently admitted with us with uh, the acute LVF. ECG showed uh, QS pattern in V1 to V4, and echocardiogram showed the scar and echinitic LED territory with the LV ejection fraction dropped down to 20%. So after stabilization and taking written informed consent, coronary angiogram uh, was done, uh, which showed triple vessel disease, but recanalized LED and critical LCX and RCA disease. So, uh, in view of uh, uh, borderline uh, renal derange, uh, renal, uh, renal dysfunction, uh, the PCI2 uh, LCX as well as in RCA was planned in a staged manner. So uh, after taking uh, uh, consent, the, uh, during PCI2 LCX, right radial uh, artery approach was taken and the uh, left, wing, left wing was hooked up uh, with the extra backup uh, 306F guiding catheter. Legion was crushed with the BMW 014 uh, wire, followed by sequential pre-dilatation was done with the 1.5 into 10 mm semi-compliant balloon, then 2 into 10 mm non-compliant and 2.5 uh, into 8 mm non-compliant balloon. These non-compliant uh, balloon were uh, crossed with the help of guiding, guiding extension catheter, uh, guide liner 6 French. After that stent, uh, Ultimaster 2.5 into 38 mm was taken, but uh, during its delivery, uh, it has some problem and is stuck in, uh, into the uh, LCX. It was not crossing the, the distal uh, point. So uh, during manipulation, it got dislodged and the balloon came out, stent remained there in LCX. So this was the oops movement actually and uh, thought what to do. Uh, now, then uh, the four mm micro snare was taken, and the uh, stent was picked up with this snare. And while while pulling out, uh, there was a uh, feeling of give way. Something was broken inside the catheter. So I have to take out all the uh, assembly, including guiding catheter and guide uh, guide wire. And when examined, uh, it was the micro snare which broke broke. So you can see on the right panel, uh, the broken micro snare loop. So after that, when we see in uh, cine uh, angiogram, cine loop, so it, it was showing that the proximal portion of the strand got stretched and it was hanging in the, into the ascending aorta. So again, thought was made to uh, bail it out with the snare only. So uh, 20 mm. Uh, Gujnak snare was taken with the help of uh, uh, GR diagnostic catheter and it was picked up and uh, uh, applying the pressure, uh, applying, uh, pulling pressure. When the pulling pressure was applied, there was again a, a give way feeling. So this time, see, you can see on the right panel, there was a give way feeling. The stent, half of the portion of the stent remained inside the LCX and the proximal portion uh, of the stent retrieved. So again, uh, this, this was the time where I called my surgeon's team uh, to be ready for the emergency surgery. But again, uh, there was a uh, thin strut, uh, stretched, uh, stre uh, stretched uh, part of the uh, uh, stent it still remained inside the uh, ascending aorta. So again, this procedure was uh, repeated with the same 20 mm uh, snare system. But this time while applying the pulling pressure, uh, simultaneously we made to cuff the patient. So uh, with, with this simultaneous uh, cuffing as well as the applying the pulling pressure, the whole uh, remaining stand uh, came out and we su successfully retrieved the stand. And this was the stand uh, came out into the two part. So uh, after uh, this uh, re successful retrieval, we uh, uh, took the check suit. 
So it was showing Timmy 3 flu into the LCX without doing any obvious injury into the LCX as well as in left main. Four days after, while doing the IVL assisted PCI to the uh, RCA, it was showing no uh, Timmy 3 flu and there is no obvious uh, residual restenosis. So we left this uh, uh, artery as such on the medical therapy only. Uh, so with this state, uh, with this uh, case, we conclude we uh, my take home message was complications are the part and parcel of the coronary interventions, proper lesion assessment, and the appropriate use of IVL or root ablation might have uh, prevented uh, this complication. Successful bailout without doing any harm to the patient is uh, really uh, satisfying. And persistent effort with the right strategy in the right direction is key to success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, good presentation. So the, uh, the, the, the presentation is uh, open for discussion. Any comment from the panelists? That's a very nice case. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have a suggestion. You have a yeah. word in place and you have a guide catheter in place. So if you lose your stain in the circ or left main, you can take a small balloon and pass it at this Actually, and and you will insert it and it could have retrieved it easily. Possibly uh, uh, that could have been easier for you. But, but at the end, a nice case, nicely done. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dutta. But it, I was tried actually because of time constraint, I have uh, skipped that uh, step. First, uh, because uh, stent was uh, only over the wire, so I took out, we closed the second wire and took out the small balloon. And uh, while uh, crossing the balloon, the stent was pushing forward. So I just thought uh, that uh, it may even, uh, or, or uh, simultaneously wire is coming, uh, pulling out. So uh, I just uh, uh, withdraw this uh, technique and then uh, took the snare. Uh, this is a very nice point and it is well taken. Now, suppose you have lost your stain in the cirque and uh, you are lucky here that your uh, one stain part was hanging in the ascending aorta. So yeah. it could have cleared it out. But had it been not that, your just stain in hanging on the LCX and your guide catheter gone and your wire is out, then uh, it could have been a really very, very awkward yeah. situation for you. Yeah, awkward and difficult situation. Yeah, that's sure. Uh, if there's no more comment from the panelists, I would like to conclude uh, uh, this section. So in this section, uh, we have uh, we, we have a presentation uh, in uh, include some uh, difficult clinical uh, scenario and some difficult coronary anatomy and how to deal with some uh, some complications. So thank you for the presenters. And uh, yes. Okay. Enjoy the thank meeting. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.